What would you do if you had to risk your life to save someone you loved? What if your choice could get you killed, not only by your enemies, but by those who were supposed to be your friends? This was the choice that Mulan faced, and her decision is the reason she has been admired ever since. Though we can't be sure if Mulan really existed, researchers have tied her story to real historical events. These are summarized in the children's book, The Ballad of Mulan, and in an online article, The Real Story of Mulan, published by China Highlights. Evidence for the connection includes the time period when the ballad was written, locations mentioned in the ballad, specifically the Yellow River, Black Mountain, and Mount Hien, and the outcome of the war, where Mulan's side appears to have triumphed and Mulan gets to return home in peace. In addition, a few details, such as the use of the title Khan rather than Emperor, suggest the poem dates from the Northern Dynasties period. Whether Mulan's story was based on an actual case is unknown, but her independent spirit and martial skills clearly suggest her origin in the nomadic warrior Proto-Mongolian Zhan Bei culture, rather than the Chinese Han culture, where women's roles were more rigidly defined. That is why the real Mulan probably looked more like a member of a nomadic Mongol tribe than the daughter of a Chinese nobleman. In the 4th and 5th centuries, northern China was repeatedly attacked from foreign tribes and experienced almost constant warfare, anarchy, and devastation. The Central Plains were in a state of continuous upheaval. Since there were 16 principal kingdoms, it is called the 16 Kingdoms Period. Before the Tuoba clan of the foreign Jambé culture established a unified regime in 386, which became the Northern Wei Dynasty. The Jianbei were originally tough nomads and excellent horsemen who came from what is now the north of Inner Mongolia. We can get an idea of their appearance by viewing ceramic figures from the tomb of a Northern Wei Khan who died about 100 years after Mulan's war. The figures include armored horsemen surrounding an ox-drawn cart plus other sets of pottery show more details of the horsemen and their horses' armor. The Zhanbei were most likely a proto-Mongolic ancient nomadic people that once resided on the eastern Eurasian steppes in what is today Mongolia, Inner Mongolia, and northeastern China. Let's use the history of the Mongols as a guide to what they might have been like. Excluding the influence of Genghis Khan, who came about 800 years after Mulan's war. The place where Mulan's people once lived is now part of northern China, southeast of the Gobi Desert. Comparing them to Mongol groups living in the Eurasian steppes, north of the Gobi Desert, is not perfect, but we can still draw some comparisons. People like the Zhan Bei, northern Wei, rode from infancy. They herded and hunted from horseback, and with bow and blade, they fought from horseback. In comparison, they were very different from the more sedentary Chinese culture south of them. According to the book, The Empire of the Steppes, when Mulan's emperor was asked about threats from the south, he responded, The Chinese are foot soldiers and we are horsemen. What can a herd of colts and heifers do against tigers? or a pack of wolves. Finally, what religion would Mulan and her family have practiced? According to a couple of sources, the foreign origin of Buddhism made it an object of suspicion, and the emperor was persuaded by his Confucian advisors to carry out a program against Buddhist monks. The emperor presided over a veritable Taoist revolution in the inner circles of power. Buddhist monks were purged in 444, and Buddhism itself was proscribed, forbidden, in 446. So while the emperor embraced the philosophy of Confucius and outlawed Buddhism, 
the common people were more likely to embrace something closer to their daily lives. Tengri, eternal blue heaven, was the principal god of the Mongols, an overarching universal spiritual presence that infused all things and through which all things derived their being. Although impersonal, Tengri governed everything that happened in the world and preserved the balance of the universe. He could influence the outcome of events, so sacrifices were routinely made to ensure his favor. Priests were called shamans. They helped to reach the spirits through chanting, dreaming, and ceremonies. They wore decorated white clothes and rode white horses so everyone knew who they were. According to Wikipedia, the Jean Bay mythology also includes the winged horse, a heavenly beast, thought to have guided an early Jean Bay southern migration and is a recurring image in many Jean Bay art forms. Once again, we've seen how important horses were to the cultures of northern China and Mongolia. In part three, we'll talk more about the daily life of the people during Mulan's time. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for references to books and online resources featured in this video.